All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for December 4, 2023 at 6 p.m. Good evening, administrators, council, and our audience members. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call the roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rogold is absent. Six members present. All right, thank you very much. Tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trust. <laughs> Thank you, Father Lord, for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for this meeting. Please let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Janelle. Hi, Janelle. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> All righty. So, moving on, uh, action on the minutes for the work session on November 6, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Ricci, <clears throat> second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on those? When you're ready. All right, Councilman Cook. Abstain. Due to absence. All right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 501. And then the minutes for November 6, 2023, regular scheduled meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any, sorry, sorry, I cut you off. That's all right. Any discussion on those minutes? <clears throat> when you're ready. All right. Uh, Gilston was the second, yeah? Yes. All right, Councilman Cook? A abstain again due to absence. All right, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are also accepted 501. All right, and then so moved, sir. for the meeting for November 20th, 2023, regular council meeting. Make have it a motion. <laughs> So Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. All right, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Oh, I skipped you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Those minutes are accepted. Six zero. All right, thank you. <clears throat> And then moving on to communication, McDonald's site plan, site plan and planning board recommendation of approval, staff report attached. I don't know if, Brian, if you had anything you needed to go over or Mr. Kick. Well, I want to introduce, uh, well, thank you, Mr. Lowry, Mayor Lowry. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Lindsay Jordan. She's with Permit Solutions representing uh, McDonald's. So if you have any other questions, she's here to help answer those questions. As of right now, uh, we are, we're good to go on the uh, recommendation from the planning board to move the ADA uh, parking spaces closer to the building. And we're waiting from Columbia Gas to give the green light to plant the trees uh, 10 feet off the easement or off of the gas line. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at as of right now. Okay. <clears throat> <Sorry>. <clears throat> the, uh, in reference to that gas line, was it not... Uh, in the last meeting if it was not permitted they didn't have to come back to us for that approval it's already been approved if if the trees cannot be planted it's done and if they can they'll plant them correct That's correct yes okay. and the uh handicap ada cap uh, parking spot was moved to where the pickup was yes is that correct? And that's represented in the, the packet tonight. Okay. Uh, the I, site plan is in there and it does represent those. I packets. understand. I just yes. wanted it verbalized sure. for the record. Thank you, sir. And thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, any other questions or comments? Uh, I had one. This will kind of be for everybody. And I, I brought it up before and it, it wasn't the right time. And uh, with, with this layout, I don't really have a problem with it. I just, I'm trying to think down the road for the future that if, 
if the new area for uh, commercial was to build up, you know, with the new um, housing development and whatnot. Um, I see, you know, and I do like the way they have it, the one-way entrance off of 235, and you can only go back out going right. Um, I mean, do you, do you think that, and I'm talking to both of you, do you think this will be okay? Like, as far as, I don't want a bunch of spouts coming off 235 and having all these problematic places where, you know, there's just traffic and no lights and everybody can't get out. I mean, do you, I mean, do you see this as a problem as of right now? Um, initially, I, I, I don't, and the reason I say that is uh, New Carlisle Chrysler purchased the other one, so okay. we don't have to worry about that spot ever having that True. that we're aware of. And then I believe that the um, ingress egress points for the possible commercial and then that uh, uh, Brubaker development will be in one. So it, yeah, we won't be, I don't want to say like Bechtel, but we're nothing like that. I would never. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, it's the poster child for right. you know, the way things are not to do so. Um, but no, th there's all, really, we only know of this one and, the, and then the one above it. And this is not a, like you said, it's one way in, one way out. I think most of everything like on Bechtel is, it's both ways. Yeah. Well, Bechtel. and the good thing here is if it was, to, big if it was to get congested and going out to the entrance or the exit going to 235 people you know i'm assuming would would pick up that well maybe it's quicker and better to go into the iga and come in the back side so mm -hmm. they've got they've got options so so that's all i really had so thank you mm -hmm. thank you mr mayor i do have another question yes sir uh this is mr kitko the uh the driveway into mcdonald's is the city going to be plowing that, or where is it going to stop? Because it comes off of the road. Yeah, we, we go straight through. So we, we follow the same path we do right now on 235. Our plow will not go into their approach. Okay, but you have the concrete thing that comes out. It, it'll basic, so basically it'll fill in snow in their entranceway, and then they have to remove it. That's typically like it's like your driveway um, driving by the drives right now. Like every winter, or so I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as we drive down 235 from the center, we make that third pass. There'll be a wind row right there. A lot of times we'll scoop what we can as we drive by, but we don't go in there and, and move the pile out of the way. Okay. Uh, and we haven't had any complaints from like the IGA entrance. It's the same thing with it. The New Carlisle Chrysler entrance, we, they don't have any issues. Well, I complain about my driveway every year, but nobody ever does anything. <laughs> In fact, they, the one that goes like this, they brought it down, just yep. piled stones on it. It's Ohio. There you go. I said, thank you. <laughs> That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, one more for either one of you may know. Is there any kind of, you know, if this passes tonight and we move forward, is there any t timeline on this? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was hoping you would ask. First of all, I want to say thank you for having us tonight and helping us through the process. It's been really wonderful working with everyone. Um, the timeline for construction right now, we're looking at April, maybe May. But if weather is what it is, is what it was last year, um, that could potentially push the project out. Um, so I would say spring of next year, 100%. What kind of timeline do they usually like once they start if there's no big hiccups? I mean, what kind of time does it take for them to build one? 90 days. 90? Wow. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Three months. Okay. Well, they don't they don't okay. Once they start. All right. It'll take them long. All right. It'll Thank take you. They, they built the one in McDonald's uh, about 30 years ago, 40 years ago now, and they have get ready to open it and it caught fire and burnt down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was you around then? <laughs> I was on that fire when it happened, so that's why I remember it. But yeah, so barring anything like that, 90 days it'll be open. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Council? <clears throat> you good, Cook? sir. No. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. City Manager's report. I was going to say, do not do we need a motion to, as planning board, to approve the plan? Oh, I'm sorry. Do. Yeah. Yes, please. Sorry. I'll move to approve, approve the plan, sir. Second. It's a motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. And that is accepted 6-0.
All right, thank you very much. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Have a safe drive home. Thank you. And to city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Um, under the city manager's report, uh, as, as we all know, the next uh, departmental reports will be on December 18th, that Monday. Uh, planning and zoning report is attached in your uh, packet. If you have any particular questions, we happen to have uh, Mr. Moore with us tonight, if there's anything. Otherwise, I will move on to the next item. Any questions for Mr. Moore, Council? All right, thank you. All right. I'm out of here. Out of here. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I do have one comment uh, from Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, even though people in the city complain because you knock on their door, and leave little tags. I do. Uh, I think you're doing an awesome job. Well, the I appreciate The city that. is starting to clean up a little bit. There's, you have a lot more work to do, but I think yes. you know where the problems are. Yes. And uh, having four or five vehicles in the side yard, I think is a problem. Oh, I totally agree. And if you see and I'm not giving you the that, address. You, you will see that a lot of what I did in the last week or so is a lot of that. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I appreciate your kind comments. Thank you so much. Welcome, sir. Yes, there's still plenty of work to do, and I'll get out as much as I can. So thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Brian. You. Thank you. Uh, moving on to informational items under discussion topics. So we have some updates. Uh, Runky Waste Management is still ongoing with waste management picking up their carts. Uh, they've been nonstop going out and collecting those. Um, under Rite Aid, uh, spoke with Randy on this. They're wor he's working with a realtor. Um, they're still trying to work on the avenue of finding out, uh, you know, some information deeper on uh, for the, for the building. But as far as what he had mentioned to you guys a couple weeks ago, there's no like update really for it. But they they are working on getting you some details. Uh, Sunshine training. Randy completed that on November 29th. Planning board on 12 12 23 meeting. The meeting will involve uh, solar panels, uh, the zoning inspector, and mayor's court, uh, 1240 section of our codes, Smith Park lot split for our new shelter house, which will you know be coming off of Washington Street. Um, did want to mention that once planning board makes their recommendations on this, city council, as you well know, has your final say on approval of their recommendations on whether you move forward with those or not on those various items. Um, I can let you know just because of the um, shelter house, we are working on um, a couple names to name the, the, the two different, like this cabin, keeping it a name, but we, we're coming up with a new name for the other place just so that we, they can be separated um, because everything seems to relate on Smith Park, so we're just gonna make that a little easier, but that's coming as well. Um, the deputy cost memo, um, if you have any questions, um, we, the uh, sheriff's office just completed their negotiations with the new contract. So um, uh, Colleen could probably answer any questions or maybe give you a brief update on why there, there's a, a memo in your packet. So, um, yes, thank you, Mr. Kiko. Um, from the information that Randy shared with me today and the memo that I believe he sent to all of you, he got the pricing for next year's contract after we had done budget. So they, it's always a not to exceed, and I believe that legislation's on tonight. So that would be putting um, six officers um, in the city at 864,000 is that max contract. And that includes also leasing a vehicle instead of what we have in our budget that you're hopefully approving tonight is for the five um, officers at 734,000 and us purchasing a vehicle. So what we decided to do is just move along with the budget and then as we get into the first quarter, maybe even half the year, we can see if those numbers need to be adjusted, I would come back for a supplemental instead of changing it now. <clears throat> Normally we never even get at that higher end of the contract amount, but the contract is in for approval, it's for the six Mm -hmm. Six officers, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'll adjust the budget if we need it next year. Probably six months into next year, we can look at the numbers. Right. Mr. Right. Mr. Question. Uh, at 860 some thousand dollars for six officers, 
And I guess this would have to go to Randy, and he's not here, so you can forward it to him mm -hmm. if you would, or you might know. Okay. We'll see. Colleen might know. What would it take to start our own department? No. A lot more than that. <laughs> we already have the cars. We buy the equipment already. Uh, we don't need a jail or a how, you know, place to house arrestees at. The county will take them at a fee. I mean, we have to, we'd have to pay for that. <clears throat> it, uh, I know uh, years ago we had a department, or New Carlisle had a department. Back in, uh, in fact, I think it was dissolved in the 80s, already, like 19, no, it might have been late 70s. Mid 70s, it was dissolved. I don't remember. Late Maybe. 70s. Pardon me. Late 70s. Late 70s. Okay. I, I knew it was dissolved around somewhere between 78 and 81. I think is what I remember somebody telling me. Uh, I also heard the rumors why it was resolved, but uh, I think for the and next year in 25, it's even going to be higher. The, uh, I, I think we ought to at least look into our own department and what the cost would be for something like that. And that's something the new council, I think, should bring up or, or make that decision and talk about. Uh, I will definitely bring it to Mr. Bridges' attention. I have also, in my almost 25 years here, know that they've done this two or three times. Uh, went out to see what it would take and it's just some of my recollection of the discussions before you know it's, it's never been approved as you know we're still at the sheriff's office one was um, seasoned uh, deputies two is um, liability uh, three that these are items that always came up um, three was the part where right now we basically get detective um, and everything above for built into this cost as, as everyone knows um, and then those were some of the major parts of it. And then all the maintenance, you know, bringing all the maintenance back of the cars in-house, 100%, not just oil changes and things like that. So those were just a few items that I remember over the years that kept coming up. Um, but, you know, it can always be looked at again. I mean, it seems like it's about every five years or so that it gets looked at. You know, uh, I think we should constantly look at stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we do it tonight or even within the next two or five years. But the cost keeps going up, and if we could get our own department, in the long run, that might be better, I don't know. <clears throat> be safe. Thank you, Mr. Cook. I'm good. One of the biggest drawbacks was we were basically a training ground. And the, due to the fact that we could not compete with the sheriff's department and a few of the other departments around the area, once the fellows got a little bit of, I guess the word is experience, under their belt, they bolted for the other, the other departments. The other factor was the liability. We were in court a number of times over problems with the younger officers. And I believe if we go back that we probably paid some pretty good damages. I was part of the committee that looked at, I guess the word is setting up the sheriff's department and going from there. It was almost a no-win situation at that time. I think that, yes, it's worth looking at, but I think you're going to come back to the same point of where we're at today. And that's my, my own thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Mr. Weissman. Another thing you have to look at is the difficulty of finding people. The fire chief has expressed a number of times uh, how much trouble he has finding qualified people. That would be a big stumbling block that we wouldn't be able to overcome. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. So, 
Um, on the <coughs> ordinance that will that is on tonight, mm -hmm. it also has the breakdown, mm -hmm. and each of the um, officers, again, at maximum of six with the new contract, runs 138,000. That's salary, benefits, mm -hmm. insurance, um, and one thing I know that we had talked about before is if we lose an officer, we gain an officer. They always keep us staffed. And going back to the training grounds and trying to find people is a negative, but also it's always good to check every so many years and just see what, what the cost would be. I mean, you know, I, I equate that same thing with, uh, if I may, sir, sure. me just, yeah. huh? just talk. Uh, if we don't constantly look at at other avenues and other ways of doing things, then what, what are we doing there, really? I mean, we should always look at that. You know, we should always look at job performances of the city manager. You know, uh, all of us are out through the city. We see what the road crew does. We see how we out, you know. I, I won't say why I see how we out, but <laughs> Usually it's outside of New Carlisle somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the, uh, we, we just have to keep looking at stuff and see if there's a possibly a better way of doing it. And as, as far as trying to keep people, uh, I, I know the smaller departments are training grounds. They get some, some uh, uh, experience. They move on. But we're in better shape now financially than we was back in the 80s, correct? Great. Uh, we're in better shape now than we was back in 2015. A lot better than we was in 2015. Uh, you know, given the sheriff's office, and I'm not saying that I don't like the sheriff's office for whatever reason. I think they do an awesome job. I just think we need to look at other alternatives and for $860,000, I think, you know, it's worth looking at. Because next year, it's going to be another $150,000 on top of it. We're pushing almost a million dollars. And we'll be within two years, I'm sure. So uh, that, that's just my thoughts on it. It's just a conversation piece for people to, to look at and think about and, and explore a little bit. As long as it don't take, you know, six years to waste a lot of money exploring. <laughs> no, I'm good, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Back to you, Mr. Kitko. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, down to the 2024 dispatching agreement. Um, we, we did get the agreement back, and the uh, run per call is still the same as last year's, so it's still at $22 per call. But due to our run volumes, which are 20, about 25% up to 1,525, we're gonna go from about 28,500 last year for services to 33,550 for services. On top of the 860 already. Well, this, this I'm sorry, this is dispatching for fire. Okay, thank you. Fire. You didn't, you didn't clarify. Yeah, Clark County Sheriff's Office dispatches our uh, fire and EMS as well. Okay. Thank you, sir. So um, just want to say, you know, they still using the same uh, numbers, and then we'll get that signed and, and sent over. Uh, the 101 offices, uh, pretty much uh, Mr. Bridge and mine are pretty much complete. We're, start, we're starting to think about things moving. Uh, Brian's is uh, just got started, so it shouldn't be too much longer, and we will be getting... Um, be living in those. Um, upcoming legislation, ordinance to set the codification update, gov deals for unneeded city property, uh, union raise increase potential, and additional discussion topics. And that is all. Let me verify my notes from Randy today. Check your notes. Dispatch. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Uh, Council, any questions for Mr. Bond? Just, just real quick, do you know what the solar panels, what, what that's pertaining to? So right now, our, as, as you know, up on, I, and the only reason I know is 235 has a solar, pan, a solar farm going in. 
um, this could be something that has been brought to or brought to the attention of the city that someone may want to do solar panel farm or do solar panels on a roof of a house. There's nothing to uh, guide those. Um, so they'll be bringing that to the planning board probably to update our code to be able to include um, solar panels. And I'm sure if a wind farm would come in, that would be another thing that would have to be coming to planning board. So. I think there I think there has been interest expressed to put in a small solar farm in, but I don't know, to be honest with you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was it, it, it residential seems residential or this was yeah. I think it could be covering the both business side of it or yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you say, Mr. Kitka, that there is one going on 235? No, up, up on 235, I believe about halfway to Indian Lake. Oh. If you, yeah, if you look on the, past Kaiser Lake, look on the left, you'll see a huge uh, solar farm going in. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Anything else for Mr. Kitka? All right, moving on, Ms. Burner, if you would. Oh, no, it's not your turn yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> comments from members <laughs> of the public. I don't want to leave you guys out. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, go to the <clears throat> Now, Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Sure. Okay, Resolution 2023-18R, introduced on 1120, public hearing in action tonight. A resolution amending the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council. Council. Move to accept. I'll second it. First by Graham, second by Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Vice Mayor motions, me second. Okay. <clears throat> oh. No, um, I can give a, just a brief, um, I'm yeah. not super up on this, but I can just give a brief one. Yeah. Um, that this resolution would be to change uh, the mayor, the vice mayor, in the mayor's absence, or at least four council members of council may call a special meeting uh, striking out the two words of city manager. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I requested this resolution uh, mainly to correct a conflict with the charter. The charter says the mayor and four members of council may call a special meeting. Um, with that, I would move that we amend this resolution by removing the vice mayor in the mayor's absence. Do you want to take off the, say it again? Remove the vice mayor in the mayor's absence. So it just reads the mayor or at least four members of council. Okay. So we need, oh, okay. Um, let's go, I saw his hand first. So go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Bond. That My only question was I, it seemed like there was a backstory to this that I wasn't aware of as far as the, you, what problem we were trying to fix. Yeah, this, but I think do you want to go into that? Because this was kind of your thing. Do you want to go over it? If you don't mind. The reason, the reason I asked for it is because of the conflict um, late October. I think so. Same night as the uh, candidate's night. Um, uh, the city manager had called a special meeting that uh, I am firmly convinced that he did not have that authority. So I, I asked him to, for this resolution, he inserted the vice mayor in the mayor's absence. Um, I am objecting to that for a number of reasons. First of all, it's not necessary because the charter, it states that if the vice mayor or if the mayor is, let me find it. it, says the mayor shall assume the duties and responsibilities contained therein. The vice mayor shall assume the duties and responsibilities contained therein and perform the duties of mayor in the mayor's absence. That would include calling special meetings. Uh, secondly, um, it's not a, a leaving the conflict. And thirdly, uh, in the mayor's absence could be um, open to interpretation. 
uh, the city manager could say, well, I tried to call the mayor, but he didn't answer his phone, so he, he's absent. When actually he could be asleep, his phone could be dead. Um, or he could say, I emailed the mayor an hour ago and I never heard back. But you only want the mayor to be the able to call special meetings. The mayor and four members of council, just like the charter says. Not the vice mayor. Right. Okay. Personally, if, if that were to happen, I would never do such a thing. As long as you were still available. Okay. Sir. First off, January 23. We all sat here and voted for those rules of council as they stand. So I guess what I'm looking at is the fact that we gave the city manager the right in that rules of council, plus we have an ordinance that gives him the right. The second factor, and if the city manager is to contact four members of council to get a special meeting, that is a permanent violation of the ethics law, which states that we cannot get four members of council. You get three, and that's it. I would ask that this council votes this matter down, this resolution, also votes the ordinance down and leaves it to the upcoming council January 1. At that point, I believe that in November of next year, 24, we are going to vote on charter changes. The public. The public, not us. This should have been done a long time ago, but that's not here or there. If this charter or if this resolution and the ordinance is voted down, I will take it upon myself to make a charter change amendment to be voted on after the first of the year with the new council. All right. Mr. Bond, did you have any questions on that since you were, weren't here? No, I think that that clarifies it. Yeah, it just yeah, it seems like we have two things that don't agree, right? right. And just trying to. And the rules of council do say that if there's a conflict with the charter, the charter comes out. Yeah. <clears throat> so, would you would you in on the email because um, Mr. Bridge had contacted the attorney. Gave his consent <laughs> on whether he could or couldn't. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. I don't think you saw that. Okay, well, we'll just for your mm -hmm. record and knowledge, we'll make sure you get a copy of that. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Okay. Mayor. <coughs> uh, as Mr. Cook said, the this council passed an ordinance to give the city manager the legal authority and ordinances stands above all because it becomes a law. Uh, we have to do that ordinance every year. To Mr. Grimm's point, there is a conflict, but that is another conflict in the charter that needs to be fixed. The city manager has always had the ability to call a special meeting when necessary and, and the example I always go to, if something drastic happens in this city and the mayor is not available, he has the right to shoot an email out and say, hey, we need an emergency meeting and we need it now, and give us a briefing of what is happening. I do not have a problem with the city manager, this one or any city manager, having that authority and some of the city managers that I know in their cities, they have that authority, and some of them is done by ordinance. Uh, it's one of them things that I equate it to the mayor's powers, of the powers that he used to have in, 
and don't have because council turned it away from me. I don't agree with that one either. But the uh, I would agree with Mr. Cook that this ordinance and the resolution needs to be voted down and taken up next year with the new council and with charter changes. And we need to get that. We need to get the charter down and get it on the ballot next November. And I'm done. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. If I could point out a couple of things. We didn't pass an ordinance. We passed the uh, rules of council. And um, the ordinance does not trump everything. The charter trumps everything. The charter of the city of New Carlisle is the ultimate authority. Anything. I'll get it. I'm usually good about that. Anything contrary to the charter is not permissible. Well, it's in violation of the charter, but there's things that need to be fixed in the charter. I think everybody agrees on that. Uh, we'll just go there. So did you, was, was you making a motion to <coughs> amend it? Amend it. Just, okay. Can you want, did you get it or do you want I, I got it, yeah. Okay, so do we have a second for Dale's amendment? I'm asking, hold on, depends on what you're getting ready to What? Did I do something wrong? I'm just asking for the second. Charter also states the council shall determine and abide by its own rules of procedure and order of business and shall provide journal of proceedings. That section of the charter then gives us the authority to give him the, the rules of council their own being. All right. But those rules of council cannot contradict the charter. Okay. So well, let's hold that discussion because I had asked for a second, so I don't think we've got it. Okay, so there's no motion on the second, or the, no second on the motions for the amendment. So I assume unless there's any other discussion, we would just go with the vote for the original because we had a second for that one, correct? We do. Okay. And the first was Grim, the second was correct. you. Okay. All right. So go ahead and call it. Uh, please. Call for who? I would say, yeah. All right. Vice Mayor Grimm. As it stands right now, no. Okay. Councilman Bond. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. No. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Lindsay. No. And Mayor Lowry. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, no. Um, and I just also just to add, I agree that probably, I mean, at least for me, my vote, I would vote no just because it should be, I think, dealt with like you guys spoke about the next council. All right, that fails. All right. <clears throat> okay, hold on. I just lost my. Twenty twenty three sixty one. All right, ordinance 2023-61 introduced on November 20th, public hearing in action tonight. Annual appropriations ordinance. So moved. Second. And the explanation of this ordinance is to allow the city to operate uh, for the year 2024 and, ex and expend the funds as stated in here. In the uh, in the ordinance, and if there's any other questions, Miss Harris is available to answer those. <laughs> we can we can allow that, but I want you to answer them questions. <laughs> <laughs> Council, any discussion on those or that? Colleen, do you have anything to add for it or anything? No. Okay, thank you, Miss Harris. When you're ready, Miss Werner. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That's accepted 6-0. Ordinance 2023-62, this was introduced on November 20th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending section 210.02 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding special meetings of city council. Council? 
Mr. Mayor, Sir? given the previous uh, discussions, I believe this one to be a moot issue. Oh, what did you, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, I said with what happened on the, on the with previous, previous discussions, this would pretty much be a moot issue. Okay. Unless anybody wants to make a motion, it would die. So be it. Die for lack of motion. Okay. All right. Moving on. Ordinance 2023-63 introduced on November 20th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending the City of New Carlisle income tax rules and regulations. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. And I will uh, give this to Mrs. Harris for an explanation of this one. It's right up her alley. <laughs> um, and most of this is housekeeping. It's for an updated house bill. And I believe our attorney and the tax administrator had filled all the information out. So they are a little bit more up on it even than I am. But it is presented for <coughs> housekeeping for us to change the rules. For uh, now you could have done that. I'm telling yeah. you. Hey, yeah. Mr. Mayor, sir. Uh, since this is a House bill that has passed, and I think it was mm, 51, 31, 51. <laughs> forget. <laughs> I got a few of them in my head. Uh, we have no choice but to to approve this, the because state law changed. So this is just to put the city in in uh, compliance with state law. And I'm done, sir. Thank you. Right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Hmm. Excuse me. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Uh, yes. Council or Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 6-0. We have ordinance 2023-64 introduced on November 20th, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance amending the sections of chapter 881 of the codified ordinances that pertain to procedures for net profit taxes. So moved. Second. You were the motion in. No. So, <laughs> well, Peggy and I both said the motion at the same time. So, so I got a motion from Mr. Lindsay. Give me a second. Second. Second by Ms. Eggleston. <laughs> Well, an explanation of this ordinance, since it's like the other one, <laughs> due to House Bill 33 being passed, this is housekeeping. And we have no choice but to do it. We have no choice but to do it. To bring us into compliance with the state law. All right. Any, any discussion? <clears throat> Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 6-0. We have Ordinance 2023-65. This was also introduced on November 20th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Hagelston. Second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance is for our water treatment purposes. Um, this is for a one year term for our, to contract for our softening salt. It uh, went up about eight bucks to $160.24 per ton. All right. Thank you. Any discussion, Council? All right. When you're ready, please. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Sorry, I was reading. <laughs> that passes 6-0. Thank you. All right. Let me see. We are on 66, yep, correct? correct? All right. The next two are read only. Mm. Ordinance 2023-66, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on <clears throat> December 18th, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio, for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 2023-67, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on December 18, 2023. 
an ordinance granting the city manager authority to purchase real property for the purpose of providing additional access to reserve at Honey Creek. And then our last one is ordinance 2023-68E. Introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending the city of New Carlisle's estimated resources available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2023 and declaring an emergency. So moved. <clears throat> second. Motion by Ms. Eggerson, second by Mr. Bond. Ben Bond. Okay. I can't okay. James Bond. I only got one more meeting. What's that? I said I only got one more meeting to get that in. So. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Harris will um, explain this one for her budget. Um, this is to adjust our books to balance with the auditor's certificate of estimated resources. So anytime at the end of the year, and it's another housekeeping, if we get a lot more revenue or short our revenue that we estimated, I bring the books more in line to what the auditors have. So we're close to ending about the same so this is adjusting the books mostly increasing as the funds are listed in there okay can there any questions comments how do you feel about that mr kitka feel great good okay i'm i'm sure that <laughs> it's always <laughs> an it, cooking the books. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I heard. Cooking. What I heard is cooking the books because it's always an emergency ordinance. And anybody that knows me in this town and this council and administration knows I hate emergency ordinances. But since the manager is not here, and I know this is his fault because it's always his fault, he's the manager. And I'm only messing with Ms. Her Mrs. Harris. So. You can let me answer, you? <laughs> Pardon me, ma'am. Please let me answer. No, that's okay. I don't need an answer. I know what you're going to say. You said it last year, tell me. <laughs> it's all you, you go ahead, ahead ma'am. So, because it is an emergency, a lot of the finance ones are short on time. I have to get it to the county auditors. I have to adjust the books before the end of the year, which is in. Yeah, I hear you. In like two weeks, so. It did, doesn't have time to be intro and reduced, and I have to wait till the end so we know how much money we've collected to make that adjustment. So yes, it is an emergency, and I know you don't like it, but I do appreciate if you um, consider it. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. It's the same word she told me last year, <laughs> and I believe her. <laughs> It'll be next year, too. <laughs> All right, when you're ready, Ms. Turner. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I'm not sure here. I'd be a yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. That passes 6 0. Thank you. All right, moving on to other business. Um, I had something I needed to bring up, and unless you guys have any uh, motion to adjourn? Not yet. Well, we got to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the only other thing I was going to do, is just make a motion to excuse me. Okay, well, we'll do that and we'll get to Miss Angle. Okay. If that's all right? Yeah. Okay. So. Make a motion to excuse Mr. Redwall. Second. So, second by Miss Angle. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That's a 6 0. Right. Thank you, Mr. Bond. If, if I may, sir, if I may interject. Oh. Did we excuse Mr. Cook on the last meeting? Yes. Did we do that? Okay, could I, I would, didn't remember. Okay. Ms. Eggleston. It was, um, it was brought up the last meeting on um, when the citizens talked, giving name and address, and uh, <laughs> if everybody saw the email from Mr. Jeffries. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe first of the year or I don't know what we need to do to go about doing it, but just have a sign-in sheet for people instead of them having to announce to the world their address. Ms. A or Ms. Eggleston, Ms. Um, Burner is your name. Um, <laughs> do you have any, I mean, does that, as far as if council was to go through with that set Jan in January or sometime, is that an issue for you either way? I just didn't know if there was any pros or cons. The way I interpreted the email also was just I could 
it says it's left for public record, but it some municipalities include it in their minutes and some do not. So yeah. I just yeah. figured it can be filed with the the minutes. I don't have to go in and write right. Like, right. In but the it's minutes. still a public record. But it does it yeah. does get it. Uh, yeah, the way I interpreted it was that it is still left for public record. Right. That's what I. Interpreted. I mean, that would just be something that you could add to the minutes, <clears throat> attachment to the minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's fine for me. I can create a sign-in sheet, too. All right. Okay. Anything else? What is it? Um, I wanted to go over something. Well, actually, I don't want to go over something. I want to give you guys the opportunity to go over something because it won't affect me, and I have no weight or concern on it. Um, with with the next, you know, the first meeting of, you know, coming up in January, I know there's a handful of people that are looking for a mayor position or vice mayor position, and I know there's been, you know, just, you know, random chit chat about it. With us being so busy with McDonald's and, and, and uh, the housing developments and things of that nature, I thought it would be good if you guys maybe had an open discussion on it now, um, because I think if we were to wait till the, or if you guys waited till the January first meeting, it. You know, you don't want to start off the year with a confusing meeting or, you know, any, just any unprofessional moments or just, you know, just a chaotic meeting. So I didn't know if you guys, I just want to bring it up and if you guys want to discuss it at all, just to kind of maybe throw your case out. I mean, it's, I mean you don't have to. I was just giving you the opportunity. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I think that would be completely inappropriate for this council to discuss a future mayor and or vice mayor until the new council gets seated they should be involved in that discussion and I'm not even sure if it would be ethical to do that what would be unethical is for people to continue talking about it when they're not in the open session well then they're in violation of some title right and i'm not arguing that i'm just yeah, saying but only if it's, it, if it's one or two people talking that's not a problem well i'm not if arguing five that. people talking that's a problem right all i'm saying is i'm not saying for councilman so-and-so to say they want so-and-so to be mayor all i'm saying is if, if johnny smith here wants to be council or mayor next year come january <clears throat> he would like to say why he wants to be mayor or she wants to be It'd be a good time to say it. I think I'm not. I'm not trying to paint anybody into a corner. I'm just trying to give everybody the opportunity to discuss it in a legal, public form. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that you have to say I want to vote for this person or for that person because that would be unethical. I, yeah. I, would, yeah. I would completely agree. I just want to say if you have something you would like to say, mm -hmm. this is the right, right way to do it. Right. And again, I think that conversation should be constituted next in January when the new council is seated. Because and that's, and the, council, that's, that's the council be making the decision, and you know, it's just the way I think it should be. And that's, you know, if that's what you guys want to do, yeah, that's what it is. I'm just trying to give you guys an opportunity. So, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, the mayor brought this up to me a while back, and I said uh, it might be a good idea just to bring it up. We have, from what I understand, three, possibly four, people interested in becoming mayor. With three people, it's going to be difficult for anyone getting a majority. With four, it'll be impossible. That's why I asked uh, <clears throat> Mr. Jeffries uh, about a month ago, what would happen if nobody gets a majority? And he said, well, uh, <laughs> my first inclination is that we'd we keep going until we did. Mm -hmm. And that's what he decided uh, when he emailed it to us. I agree with the mayor. I don't want to. We have a lot of people watching us. We have potential developers. We have potential homeowners. We have potential business owners. I don't want this to turn into not really a free for all or, or, or shouting matches. Um, we need to conduct ourselves in a uh, in a manner to which. City Council should conduct itself. And if I may, sir. Yeah, and, and real quick, but I don't want to interrupt because this is really not my place to discuss. I, I was hoping that the other two candidates or people who were elected would be here. I, I mean, I figured they were elected, they would be here tonight, but they weren't. So 
Um, but again, I'm not, I, I wasn't trying to say you guys should try and decide tonight. I just figured if anybody wanted to say their piece publicly, why they would let that, this would be a great time to do it. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. Again, I'm going to reiterate that it should be done next month when the new council is seated. Uh, and to Mr. Vice Mayor, the comment of didn't want to have a free for all, I think is kind of insulting to this council and the next council that isn't even here yet. I said I to, don't to, really mean to insinuate really want to that this council control. cannot conduct themselves and present themselves professionally up here and in public. And to the video, people out there in the video land. Free for all was the first word that came to mind. I said I was not really. I believe I said I fell short of calling it free for all. I didn't mean we were going to come to fist <clears throat> I guess we're done. Anyone else? Move to adjourn. Did you, oh, did you have something, sir? <laughs> yeah, I got something to say. I, I basically agree with Mr. Lindsay oh that this question belongs. I didn't ask a question. I didn't ask any questions. No, 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 no. no. I just well, wanted to give anybody the opportunity that wanted to say anything. Let's say this discussion belongs after the first of the year. I will further state that <coughs> January 1, I had aspirations of this council being a little argumentative. However, wait, come on, next January? Or no, this one, the present council. No, I mean, starting this past year. Yes. Okay, I got you. I wouldn't misunderstood what you were saying. <laughs> However, I think that this council has conducted itself in a very amicable reasoning. I think we've been able to talk out the majority of our problems, and we'll hope that we can continue to do that. There has been discussion about three different factions on next year's council. I think only then will we stop and have to realize that we are basically here by the goodwill of the people. We owe to them to do the best job that we are able to do as a group. Well said, sir. All right, anyone else? Okay. Move to adjourn. Motion by, motion by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn, and I'll go with because she's got a red shirt. She was, she was the second one. It was but, the second. Peggy, it was a pretty close tie, but I'll just go with it. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggles? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Accepted 6 0. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good night, all.